Um, for the first time in the new year, we are back with a monthly discussion, and as always, Sam? Hi, sorry. <laughs> I feel like we haven't done this in a while. Uh, it has been, uh, it's been over a month, so, or as, that's at least what Skype says. I mean, then, you know, Skype never lies. Well, I mean, I don't know how it would, but, um, so you've been having a good new year? Yeah, you? Uh, I can't complain. Or I can, but I don't, I mean. Nobody's listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, but at least Baron Corbin's not GM anymore, so that's a, that's a positive. That is a good thing. No, my cat would only stop going in, in coming in. You know, she's interrupting the recording. Stupid cat. Um, but uh, well, it's been a well. I mean, I, I guess that's the best way to start it off. It's been a few. I mean, it's been a few weeks at least. What do you think so far of the quote-unquote new era of WWE? still seems to be the same uh, as the old era, except Finn Balor is getting pushed, so there's that, but mm -hmm. Becky Lynch is fighting Asuka. The same four tag teams on SmackDown. Yeah. There's four tag teams on SmackDown? <laughs> well, according to SmackDown, there's the Bar, The New Day, and The Usos, so three. Yeah. And, then and now Shane McMahon and, yeah, Shane McMahon and The Miz, so there's four. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how There's three women wrestlers on SmackDown, Charlotte, Asuka, and Becky Lynch. Well, I mean, um, I'm unsure of the uh, suspect nature of the uh, Mandy Rose and Naomi uh, angle, but I don't know where they're going with that. Probably a kick Lord only knows where they're going with that. Probably a kickoff show match on yep. Royal Rumble. Well, I mean, somebody on Twitter brought up a, good, a fair point that it could be that they're using that they did the angle to as a favor to USA to promote Temptation Island because it's like you know the point of Temptation Island is like couples go and they're tempted to break up with each other or cheat on each other or whatever the case is. It's, you know, not that Mandy Rose is the gold standard of women's wrestling, but it's <laughs> not helping women's wrestling or Mandy Rose for that matter. That's, I mean, that's fair. Yeah, that, that is fair. <clears throat> um, sort of like Alexa Bliss's talk show is not really helping her. It's not really hurting her, but it's not really helping. No. Yeah. Um, now, do you necessarily have a problem with the likelihood that Finn's going to lose to Brock? Or do you just like the fact that Finn's at least getting an opportunity? I mean, I like the fact that somebody other than Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns are getting an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it should be Finn Balor. Well, um, I'm just tired of Brock Lesnar in I, general. I agree, and that's that's what I said on the side, that it's not that I don't want Finn to win, it's that if Brock loses, I want his I want that to be his last match where he does not come back. Yeah. That's like, it. It's, and if, sorry. No, go ahead. If they're all about, like, a new era, like, he needs to lose. Yeah. And, you know, because the idea of Finn Balor and, let's say, Seth Rollins, like, the rumor has it that Seth is going to be the one challenging for the Universal title at WrestleMania, that's still be a good match. Yeah. You know, and... I'll... Nobody wants to see Brock Lesnar. I don't care how much money he pulls in. He pulls in money because he's a big name. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean people want to see him. Yeah, especially with the fact that there's a rumor, the, the rumor going around anyway is that the women are main eventing this year's WrestleMania anyway, so does it really matter who's in the world title match? No. 
Because if Ronda Rousey is going to main event in an interpromotional match, which I still don't understand, because it's still the rumor that Becky Lynch or Charlotte are facing Ronda Rousey, and I don't understand that, because if Ronda's women's champion, shouldn't she be defending the title against the Raw superstar? Yeah, well, that would make sense. Even though... Uh, even though these other Raw superstars may be tied up in the women's tag team title match, which will more than likely be on the kickoff show anyway, but that's more than like, oh, Sasha and Bailey against Nia Jax and Tamina, or the Riot Squad, or the Iconics, or, you know, it's, I mean, I agree, because I would rather see Nia Jax challenging for the tag team titles than the women's title, because also with Ronda, she doesn't deserve to fight again. At least for she a while. She needs to be fired. I don't know why she's... I mean, I think the WWE needs to do spring cleaning, but at this point, they're worried about spring cleaning. Because they're worried about people leaving them and succeeding elsewhere. Because now there are options to go elsewhere. Yeah, but there's definitely... I don't know if this is harsh, but I don't really care anymore. <laughs> there's definitely dead weight. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm sorry, Tamina has been employed for 10 years and has accomplished absolutely nothing. I agree. There's so many women in NXT <laughs> that are, I mean, like, ready to be on the main roster. Mm -hmm. And getting rid of people like Tamina frees up a spot. Yeah. Completely agree. And, you know, that's sort of like what Gregory Helms said in an interview I watched, that he didn't care that he got released because he'd been there for so long that he wanted to do something new. Yeah. That when does it get to the point where you're okay with getting fired because you want to go do something new because you've been there so long? Or is it that you realized... Yeah, I'm not good enough to sign anywhere else. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be fair, anybody who thinks that that's working for WWE, that means that they haven't paid attention to Impact Wrestling, and this is not an insult to Impact Wrestling. Even though it might sound like it, it's more of a backhanded compliment that... They have a tendency to give every former WWE guy a chance... Because you never know who you're going to hit with. Well, and it's... Again, I mean, I don't like to pick on the women, but, like, Alicia Fox has been there for ten years. She's won a title once and held it for, what, four months? Yeah. I, I, I think it's time for her to... I mean, that was nine years ago also, because I'm pretty sure she won it yeah. back in 2010. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was 2010. Oh, that's it's like yeah. Uh, sorry. No, I was I was mixed up with uh, Tamina. I mean, uh, Alicia Fox and Natalia. Um, you know what are your wrestling isn't for everybody. I mean, she's talented, but like m clearly, there's a reason you haven't gone anywhere. Yeah. No, no. That's, I mean, yeah. there are you know, like look at Cody Rhodes. He was definitely being held back. But, again, there's some people that just need to go. Yeah. It's like... Well, that's a good segue. Why are you still there? Well, that's a good segue to... I'm sure you've probably heard the ridiculous amount of people at this point that have asked for their release from the company. That being The Revival, Mike and Maria. Uh, there's been heavy rumors that Grand Metalik wants to... Um, and, uh, rumors of Goldust, and I think Dolph Ziggler, but I think the difference with Dolph Ziggler is, I don't think it's, he's asking for his release as much as his, as much as it is, his contract is expiring. I think, again, Goldust, I'm, I'm not comparing him to Alicia Fox, because Goldust has accomplished <laughs> in his career, but... I think it's time for him to go. The revival never gonna get treated the way they should be. They should go to AEW. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Mike and Maria. Clearly, again, they Maria was somebody who wasn't used good in her first run. Let's be honest, wasn't that good. Yeah. But she busted her ass off. I was impressed with her at Evolution. Mm-hmm. She definitely showed that, you know, stepping away from WWE, she really honed in and got better. Yeah, that's fair. And then they, there was, you know, signing them. I think everybody thought something was going to happen and nothing happened, and it sucks. And I think it's clear at this point nothing is going to happen with them, and they're better off going somewhere else. No, I, I completely agree, and, you know, um, you know, Grand Metalik is the same, that I think he's just disappointed with how he's been booked, uh, since he arrived, which I don't really understand why, uh, WWE, I mean, I understand the, uh, bringing together of Lucha House Party, but I don't understand why they weren't put into the tag team division and moved out of the Cruiserweight division. Yeah, well, and they're, they're I don't know, they're, they're treated like a joke. Yeah. I mean, and in a way, they're sort of treated like heels. Because, oh, they wrestled a three-on-two handicap match. Yeah. Babyface is wrestling rules. a handicap match. Yeah. Okay. Coming up with their own rules. Okay. How are they not heels? <laughs> oh, because yeah, they're Max sense. guys. Oh, uh, yeah, because Max guys can't be heels. WWE logic. Um, but this also morphs into the rumor of uh, apparently there was a mid Carter last year, an unnamed mid Carter last year, who asked for his release and wasn't granted for it, granted it, which does point to the idea that WWE doesn't have to accept the person's release request for a release, which is true. They don't. No, no, because they're under contract. They legally do not have to allow them. Yeah, especially especially now with AEW, but that's where I think the difference is with Dolph Ziggler, that I don't think Dolph Ziggler is asking for his release, I think his contract is expiring. It probably is, because he had, I, Lord knows what contract he signed the last time he signed a contract. True, and there was a rumor. You know, it only might be months instead of years. Yeah, and there was a rumor going around that somebody's contract is expiring after the Rumble, which could be Dolph Ziggler. Because pointing to when he returned last time could have been that because that's because he signed a new contract. No, I think he's another one that's pretty much accomplished what he's going to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, he's still young. I don't even think he's 40. No, I don't think he is. Yeah, I think he's you know, he's almost 40, but even he's not even 40. I mean, he's accomplished a lot. Yeah. But I believe it was according to what culture that they said that uh, Dolph was offered a contract to become a producer and he rejected it. Which I think that's insinuating that uh, WWE wants him to start wrapping up his entering career. But he I mean, he's obviously concussion prone, which might be... Well, I... This is obviously an issue. Yeah, I do agree with that, and I think that maybe he just wants to take some time away from wrestling, and if that's what he wants to do before he ends up in AEW, let's say, or back in WWE, I don't think that's a bad thing. Because it's obvious that he wanted more time away from the company last year before he came back. You know, more than, what, three weeks that he got? Um, yeah, he's... So... I don't think it would be a bad thing for him. No, and he's been doing a lot of, you know, stand-up and uh, political TV. Like, he's been doing a lot of things outside of wrestling already. I think he probably just wants to be have more freedom to do that. Yeah, and I think with AEW or Impact Wrestling or, well, that's I don't think he would go to Ring of Honor, but that's just me. Uh, you know, I do wonder if the New Japan owners would still have as much an infatuation with him as they did a few years ago. Um, but that would be interesting to know if he would go to New Japan. I don't think he would, because factoring in his injury history, I think it would be too, 
uh, too much of a rough style and not as, like, they would, you know, people don't realize that coming over from Japan and going to WWE, there is a cause for a learning curve. Just like it would be going, doing the reverse, going to Japan and moving from WWE. There would be a learning curve to learn the new style. Unless you're Chris Jericho. Yeah. Well, they don't call him out for nothing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I completely agree that I think WWE is holding back on the spring cleaning for the wrong reasons and needs to look at what would best benefit them for the future as opposed to what better, what they believe would stop from benefiting AEW. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They have the talent pool. Look at NXT. Like, Ricochet, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso, Candice LeRae. Like, they have the talent. Yeah. And there's plenty of people that want to sign with NXT. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not even like, not that you know, not that those guys that I said are replaceable, but you know, there's plenty of more other of other talent that would love to sign with NXT. Yeah. So you know, again, get rid of those people on the main roster that serve no purpose. Yeah, and I think that it goes back to the one thing that WWE doesn't realize because they're you know just being protective is. Somebody said that this founding of AEW is not going to affect WWE. It's going to affect Impact the most. Because instead of moving from the second best promotion or the third be well, more like the third best promotion, because I don't really uh, factor in New Japan as a even being on the status of a United States wrestling promotion but I think that they helped ROH become a second in command as far as you, the U.S. is concerned. But this bumps impact maybe out of the top five even. Yeah. Because if you want to even say that, oh, New Japan and Ring of Honor are separate, then I would say, okay, New Japan is number two, Ring of Honor is number three. And then AEW is number four and... TNA is number five, but it's going to negatively affect it because if there is instability in TNA, then they're going to look for stability with AEW. And that's the problem, that it will affect Impact Wrestling. I think it will. But, well, I, definitely. you know, there also has to be a reason why Anthem wants to get rid of them. Or is at least thinking about it. <laughs> because of the rumor late last year of them wanting to sell Impact to AEW. But the real question is, would you buy Impact Wrestling? No. Exactly. Because Impact is unfortunately damaged goods. At this point, Impact is sort of on the same level as the WWE Saudi Arabia shows. <laughs> Damaged goods. Sorry. No, you're right. I don't. And it's sad because when they first started, they were definitely. <laughs> You know, a top, I don't know what I'm. They definitely had the potential, but yeah, it's just gotten nobody takes them seriously. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree, um, and you know, it was the life. It basically it was the life after the war, and the first sign of any competition because of who was behind it. You know, the Jarrett's being behind it. It gave even a slight alternative, or it gave more of a place to work you know and and people might say oh Vince hates that Vince hates that no he doesn't 
Vince knows that comp competition and having another place to work for the boys is the best is is the best for, is what's best for business. He just plays it like that because he doesn't want to lose. He doesn't want to be made to look stupid. Because he realized, in a way, letting Cody go, Cody made him look stupid. He doesn't want somebody else to do that. Because the fact that Chris Jericho went to him before he signed with AEW and told Vince he was signing with AEW and Vince was okay with it, you'd really think that if Vince hated competition, he wouldn't be okay with Chris Jericho signing with the company for the reason why Jericho said he was signing with AEW? You know, it's like, no, Vince, Vince loves competition because he knows it improves the health of the business, especially with the fact that with Vince going and signing the deal that he did with Fox and renewing and renewing the uh, you know and renewing the cable agreement that he knows it'll help him it'll only help him especially having AEW on television you know You know, it's just puzzling to me how, oh, people are already choosing sides of AEW or WWE. Oh, AEW is going to pose a threat to WWE. Oh, this. Uh, no. AEW barely even has a roster. Listen, Brandy Rhodes is their COO. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. You know, it is kind of funny how Brandy Rhodes has the same, holds the same position in AEW as Stephanie McMahon does in WWE, according to what somebody said. Uh, however, we all know the only reason she has that title is because her last name is Rhodes. I do not like Brandy Rhodes. No. Oh. In case you couldn't tell. <laughs> Actually, I couldn't. You're, you're a good actor. Um, I mean, do I think she has the business savvy to be in that position? No. Do I think she might be aware of maybe finding talent? I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no, but to say that Britt Baker was a bad first signing for the women's division... I think she was a good signing. I don't know how much Brandy actually had anything to do with it, but, you know, I think it does line up with the fact that Britt Baker was on All In, and then if Tessa Blanchard was actually able to be signed with the company, then they would have signed her with the company too. But Tessa is with Impact Wrestling, which is also an indication of ding 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 that's why impact wrestling has stuff to worry about because in my opinion there are people if i was aew that i'd be looking at to say once they're free i want them same with lucha underground once they're free from lucha underground which the question is with lucha underground if they're actually going to do a season five um or not because that company's once again up in the air and questionable of what they're going to do, but that's a fucking circus over there. Pardon my French. You know, that's the other thing, you know, WWE isn't the only place where talent is getting let go of and, you know, there's need for turnover, as you put it. Impact Wrestling, there's going to be turnover. Yeah. Lucha Underground, I'd probably wager to guess that there might be eventually, especially if Season 5 falls apart and the company goes bankrupt. Or whatever the case may be. Um, but that's just the business. There's roster turnover. Always. It, it needs to. You know, that's... What hurts the business more is not having roster turnover than it does having roster turnover. Would you agree? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's going to get stale. Yeah. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah, and that's why a brand split does work to a point, because it 
stops from having everyone fight each other. You know, like, it's been a year since, you know, the Usos fought, uh, actually, to be fair, a year ago, most of the teams on Raw weren't a team. <laughs> a whole other issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, the perf perfect example, uh, the Authors of Pain. Everybody on SmackDown has never fought the Authors of Pain. To be fair, the other teams on the, on SmackDown, the Revival, I mean, that have never fought the Revival either, but um, just looking at Raw's tag team division, I wonder how the draft this year is going to go. If they're actually going to break up the SmackDown 3, that being the bar that they use those in the New Day to actually allow for them to... Uh, have fresh teams on SmackDown, but also there's the idea of there's four other people having their contracts expiring, and I think it would be inept of us not to talk about it at least. AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and the Good Brothers also have their contracts expiring, because to my knowledge, none of them have officially signed back yet. And I could see every single one of them leaving? I could too. But a higher percentage, who would you say has the highest percentage of walking out? The Gallows and Anderson. I, I agree. I, I agree completely with them on that because I think that their leaving would be justified. Yeah, I think... And then I think it would be Nakamura and then AJ Styles. I don't see AJ Styles leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also what else you do with AJ Styles. Yeah, well, because they haven't really figured out how to book him outside of the title picture. No. Unless they move him to Raw, which would maybe do him good. I think, yeah, yeah I, I do think so, because that would open up the interesting uh, option of AJ versus Seth Rollins. Which but, is one thing uh, we haven't AJ, seen. Uh, Finn. AJ Finn, Drew McIntyre, and AJ, even though I think Drew McIntyre has a possibility of moving over to SmackDown, even if he is Vince's pet project, I think SmackDown would be a better spot for him. Even if people, oh, he's not needed on SmackDown. I don't know. Again, I maybe, I think... Gallows and Anderson, not that they're a lost cause, because they're obviously super talented. I think WWE, in terms of tag team, has no idea. We know what they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, I agree. But I think, um, again, moving Nakamura to Raw might do some good. I, I agree. I agree. I think that it's going to be very interesting to see what happens at this roster shakeup because it points to um it points to the idea that a lot of people have been on SmackDown since the beginning, which is kind of like ominous to think about because AJ's been there since the beginning, Rusev's been there since the beginning, the beginning of the brand split. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of the people have been there since the very beginning of the brand split, and it's very ominous to think that at this point they're going on three years on that brand. Like, what else can you do on the same brand for as long as they've been on that brand? Exactly. That they need a new home, and the only thing I've heard about AJ Styles as far as contracts is concerned that he wants a contract similar to Randy Orton where he doesn't have a lot of dates outside of the television tapings because he wants to be able to spend more time with his kids, which in my opinion is one of the reasons why more than likely that he dropped the world title. That he was tired of all the extra travel and all the extra appearances and he just wanted to be able to spend some time with his kids. And AJ's been doing this for, what, over 20 years? I mean, I think he's earned his... He's by far earned... 
Oh yeah. But we have to choose what he wants to do. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and I think that that's. Uh, especially now with AEW and the possibility of AJ's, clo- you know, because of AJ's previous uh, friendships with the Elite and working with all of them in Japan outside of Cody, I think that AJ, that WWE would be very wary of letting AJ go. Even and more likely to give him what he wants just to keep him because of the reason losing AJ Styles to AEW would be a big loss for WWE. Oh, definitely. Losing Shinsuke Nakamura to AEW based on how he's been booked? Mm, I don't know if I agree with that. It's a big loss in terms that he's a great talent. It it all depends on how he's booked outside of WWE, though. I think if Nakamura ended up back in New Japan, that would be different because uh, New Japan could then market him in the States as a... For, uh, I can use him when they when they do shows in the in the U.S. because of his past with WWE that they didn't have when he was just in New Japan town. But that's the. <clears throat> okay. Wait. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's the thing, that I think it would be better for, w, uh, better for New Japan to have, I think, Naka, I think New Japan would gain more having Nakamura than AEW would, in my opinion. Yeah. Because Nakamura is a legend in New, in New Japan. Not to say that AEW would not have it because of a working agreement or whatever the case may be with New Japan, which I do think there may be some sort of agreement in place to let people work for both companies, whether it's a working agreement or not. I think it's more likely that it's just a, um, an agreement that they can work for both promotions, but, you know, sort of, you know, like having some, you know, like Cassius Sono or how WWE used to do it with the UK guys sorry my cat's being very uh, attention seeking today I don't know why because she can't figure out what she wants to do what do you want to do <laughs> but that does uh, but either way, that does make uh, the post WrestleMania WWE very interesting because you wonder what's going to happen as far as AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and all those guys are concerned because their contracts are up around that time. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see it going either, you know, either way. Yeah, I agree. Either way, I think it's a very interesting time to be a wrestling fan. Definitely. For the first time in 20 years. <laughs> um, but the other thing that's coming up, not just with the Royal Rumble, but um, is the Hall of Fame. Because if memory serves, I think either a few weeks before the Royal Rumble or right after the Royal Rumble, the first inductee into the Hall of Fame is usually announced which I think could be happening either this week or the go-home show before the Rumble, which actually is this week the go-home show before the Rumble. Actually, it might be. It might be, because I'm pretty sure the Rumble... Well, actually, the Rumble would have to be the 27th, because that's the last Sunday of January. <laughs> so, yeah, it actually is the uh, it actually is the go-home show this week. So it is possible that they announce the first inductee into the Hall of Fame 
this this uh this week. If memory serves that they usually do it, I don't remember. But I know it's usually around this time that they in, uh, announce the first inductee. Or at least I think it's around this time that it's usually the first inductee. Oh, so. so, the question that's trapped in all this nonsense is who do you think is going to be the first inductee into the 2019 class? Or who would you like to see be the first inductee into the class of 2019? Um, that's a good question. It's going to be a big name. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah. Where are they this year? Um, New York? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jersey. Oh. I'm thinking of Rock, but I'm I'm wondering if they're gonna go back to like Miami and wait mm-hmm. until they, you know because I'm sure they'll go back to Florida at some point, and maybe they'll wait until they're in you know his home state. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, or maybe the Undertaker. I could I could see that. Because I'm, I'm he's he's got to be done. Yeah, after Crown Jewel, I would say it's a possibility. <laughs> or even Kane. Yeah, Kane, Kane, Kane could be a headliner, definitely. I'm, I'm not holding my breath for China. You'd probably be holding your breath for a while. Or Miss Elizabeth. I mean, I think it's getting to the point where Liz, uh, Elizabeth could be a posthumous inductee because enough time has passed due to uh, you know because of the status of her death but it's like you know the questionable nature of her death with how many other people that have died for such a question within such a questionable nature if that's the reason why she's inducted not getting inducted then there's a lot of other people that could could have been there's a whole other top I mean Jimmy Snuka was Accused of murder, like. Oh, Stucka clearly did it. If he was in a better mental clearly. state, if he, I mean, yeah. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say if he was in a better mental state when he got retried for it. Oh, he would have been convicted. He would have been convicted. I mean, nobody wants to hear this, but Stone Cold Steve Austin was convicted of beating his wife. Yeah. So, who who gets to pick and choose? And Stone Cold deserves, I'm not saying, beating your wife is a disgusting thing. Yeah. And I don't condone it. But where do you draw the line between the person as an athlete and what they did for a sport and their personal life? Mm-hmm. And them being a shitty person. I completely agree. I mean, because also you want to factor in how many people within the wrestling business have died through drug-related deaths. I mean, if anything, why why not honor Liz? And why why not honor Liz if she was a victim and not the reason? Yeah. Well, and again, I mean, I can't speak into China's mental state, but I think a lot of what she chose to do in her life was, you know, because of drugs and because of alcohol and she left the company in a bad way and I think that screwed her up yeah I mean I will I, I, I can't speak to it either but from what I've heard about people who worked with her they've spoken very highly of her well most people have um but that maybe at the end she thought she was worth more than she actually was and she didn't realize how many, how much of the position she was in was based on who was helping her. Not to say yeah. she didn't have the talent, but I think um, maybe an inflated ego because of her past run of yeah. having men bump for her and working with men and then being bumped down to work with women, that she wasn't in the same position that she was in working in the women's division as she was when she was Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, does, does 
can you take away what she accomplished for what she did for that company? Oh, there's no doubt that she was like a, uh, she kept a, at least a wee bit of seriousness for the women during a time of very little seriousness. But it's more also along the lines of <clears throat> she thought she had more value than she actually did. No, well, and again, I, as you said, at I think the time. a lot of that was at she the time. surrounded herself with the wrong people. Yeah. I mean, do I think that Triple H had anything to do with her not getting the financial uh, raised that she thought she was entitled? No. I don't think Triple H would play that type of game of... I mean, do I think he's a dick sometimes as far as on-camera happenings, like with Booker T and other people? Yes. Do I think he would play the card of trying to get somebody fired? No. I don't think he would use that because, according to Bruce Pritchard, he's unsure the status of Triple H and Stephanie's relationship at the time of China's release because they broke up, the amount of times that Triple H and Stephanie broke up and got back together before they stayed together, it was hard to know the timeline of when China got let go and when they were together and when they weren't. And it's just, odds are, yes, they were, because if I remember correctly, I think China was let go in like 2001, 2002. It was, it was uh, 2001, because that Survivor Series of that year is when Trish won the title for the first time. So it is more than likely that they were together, but I doubt Triple H would do that, and I most definitely doubt that Stephanie would, because I don't think they're the type. They don't come off as a type that would play with somebody's livelihood like that. I think that's one of those things that only the people involved know the truth, and then it's yeah. There's, it's also three sides to every story, you know, yours, mine, and the, and the truth. Mm -hmm. I think that's, again, one of those things. <laughs> the uh, truth lies somewhere in the middle of each of, their, each of their sides. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, the point is that that's not to say that there weren't people in the business that I think could have or have played with people's livelihood and were fucked up people for it. But I just think that that changed once the business changed. You, go, you know, you know, because like I recently watched the Tommy Rich shoot interview, and Tommy Rich said stuff about how he used to work for Bill Watts and Eddie Graham and those guys, and they would pay him a hundred fifty bucks, even though he was main eventing the show, and Dusty Rhodes was making three grand. You know, they were doing it to fuck with him because he was a young a young kid on top. You know, it's like, no, you don't get to fuck with the guy, you pay him the same. Because if he's headlining, he should get at least somewhat similar to what the headliner got. He shouldn't be getting somewhat, somewhat similar to what the lower guys got. You know, that's like saying just because somebody doesn't have the same expenses as somebody else, that they don't need the same... Um, that they don't see that they, they don't need the same income as other people because you never know what somebody else is planning like you never know if somebody's planning to start a family and they're not in a family already you know what i mean yeah um yeah i mean i agree i think i think it would be smart for wwe to go with a headliner first because i don't think they usually go with like a posthumous inductee first. I think a posthumous inductee is usually somewhere in the middle of the class. So it's like mid-February probably. Or late February. Um, as far as that's concerned, I mean, at least right now for me, I don't know if it's with you, at least with the posthumous people, it's tough for me to know who, or remember who is getting or who has gotten inducted and who hasn't. I to... <laughs> but if rumors are what they are, Bam Bam Bigelow seems like he's going to be the posthumous inductee this year because he was supposed to be inducted last year. We discussed that before. But they held him off for this year because of 
it being in the tri-state and it, and being from Jersey. Do I think that Bam Bam holding off Bam Bam for another year would be that bad? No, because I think the one mistake WWE's made with the Hall of Fame is like in, in normal sports. Uh, they have the five-year grace period in at least baseball. I know that that they have the grace period between retirement and induction, where you have to wait a certain period of time before you can get inducted or be eligible to be inducted. I think that helps in keeping it where, okay, well, this guy's going to be the headline guy. You know, I mean, yeah, oh, baseball doesn't have headline. Bullshit, baseball doesn't have headline people. It's the people that you know are surefire Hall of Famers. Wrestling's the same way. Um, but having that where, you know, if you had it where Shawn Michaels did not get inducted, even though Shawn Michaels was a first ballot Hall of Famer, quote-unquote, was Edge? Edge shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame already. That's not saying he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. It should be where no. Edge is one of the people that should be talked about as a headliner now. He was definitely inducted early because he had to retire early. Again, he would have been in the Hall of Fame at one point, but we all know, let's be real, he was inducted because he had to retire. But in my opinion, I think that's the problem with WWE's Hall of Fame, that they... Uh, don't necessarily have the specifics fleshed out as certain people should be in already that aren't. Even though that they're even even if you say, oh well, this person had a bad uh, a bad reputation with WWE. Yeah, but if they're dead, does it really matter? Their like what relationship they had with the company if they're not able to go there and induct and accept the induction? Yeah. You know, I mean, they worked it out with the Warrior, they worked it out with Bruno, so why can't they work it out with China? You know, I think, in my opinion, I think China should be inducted ahead of Bam Bam Bigelow. Because in my opinion also, I think Bam Bam should have been inducted already. Uh, so should China. I agree. But I also think that holding off Bam Bam for another year is not a big deal. No. Because I think right now China is entered the same place as where Rick Rude was. Um, as far as Rick Rude being somebody that people look at, especially people in the business look at, as um, somebody that should have been inducted already. You know, and I think China entered in that place of people are mad and won't view it as a Hall of Fame until China goes in. You know, but in my opinion, it's not really a Hall of Fame until they have a physical Hall of Fame, but Vince doesn't want that. Even though you can make money off a physical Hall of Fame. No, and then, you know, there's definitely people in there that... Nobody's ever going to be happy with who is just there, but there are definitely people that arguably have no spot, have no spot there, shouldn't be. Um, but, again, you know, I think, like, Elizabeth, again... Elizabeth paved the way for people like Sonny. Why wasn't Elizabeth there first? Like, you know, it could go... round and round in circles. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. And um, I think that's the main issue with uh, the WWE Hall of Fame that, you know, you could talk about for days at a time and weeks at a time, which I think we, as far as us, are, as far as me and you are concerned, we probably will be talking about this, especially after, uh, especially if between now and the next time that we get together to record, the first Hall of Fame induction, inductee is announced for the WWE Hall of Fame, which I do think it's more than likely that between now and the next time we record, that will happen. Uh, more than likely, yeah. But before we uh, uh, go our separate ways for this, I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think could happen at the Royal Rumble this year, knowing that it's going to happen next week. Um, but you know what? I honestly don't know. I mean, I'm hearing rumors it's Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I'll, I'll go with Rollins probably winning the opportunity and Finn Balor winning the title. 
it being Finn versus Seth. <laughs> That's just your dream situation. <laughs> I mean, uh, but who doesn't want to see that? You're, you're, you're right. I mean, it would be a nice change of pace from where it was with uh, them feuding for the Intercontinental title last year. Um, I would agree along the lines of because that's basically the only thing Seth hasn't done in WWE because he's done everything else. And I think instead of letting him be similar to a guy like Chris Jericho, not to say Jericho hasn't hit the point of uh, like a not to say Jericho hasn't had a good career, but there is holes in his resume as far as Jericho is concerned of stuff he has never done. And I think that to have Seth avoid having those types of holes let him do it because in my opinion there's no reason why you don't unless you let somebody like a Finn Balor I mean before Finn was in the you know before Finn was in the room uh, before Finn was going for the universal title win the match and let that be his coming out party but I think the same could be said for Seth to let Seth officially cash in as being a top guy like the franchise of the company the guy in WWE Um, especially with the fact that Roman is more than likely going to be on the shelf for at least most of this year, too. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to need... I mean, you can't replace Roman Reigns, but yeah, no. They're going to need a big star, and I think you're right. It's Bobby Rollins. Because they don't have those household names, and I think that they need to start, or at least Triple H taking over, he may start finding ways to uh, get the guys over to the point of where they don't need to rely on the nostalgia as much as they have. Oh, um, definitely. To where Undertaker can retire and go away. Yeah. Kane can retire and go away. Big Show can retire and go away. Um, you know, uh, other people can retire. <laughs> The Rock can stop coming back for wrestling uh, uh, matches. But, you know, that's just going to happen as time progresses, and I think Seth winning would be a good step in the right direction. The only way I would agree with you on Finn, though, is if the Royal Rumble is Brock's last match. Which, you know, Lord knows. Because I don't want him back after he drops the Universal title. I want him done. I want him gone. I want him out of the company. Yeah. Off to UFC. Because yeah. the only thing I can think of as to why he re-signed is because they knew about him uh, not being able to be active in... Uh, not being active in the... Uh, you saw the testing pool yet? Like not being active to be able to fight because of what happened last time with yeah. his last fight. That that's why they allowed him to re-sign with WWE because they knew he wasn't going to be active to be able to fight yet. It makes sense. I mean, that's the only way it would make sense to me. I don't know. Um, but just before before we wrap this up, I just wanted to mention to anybody who is actually who is listening. Um, yes, uh, there has been sort of a backup, I guess, in with YouTube uh, as far as the videos are concerned because of me just not publishing them. There are videos ready to be published. I'm just uh, uh, backlogging them. I guess you could say, before I let all of them go so I don't have to really pay attention to YouTube for at least a little bit and can just rely on the backlogged videos as opposed to having to upload because as outside of discussion videos, I don't really upload that much anymore. Because other stuff has taken my... Uh, 
attention away from YouTube. I don't know if that's the same for you, but that you yeah, know, I have not life. Yeah, life has gotten in my way, and I've not been active on YouTube lately. Yeah, I know. I looked at your account. <laughs> Um, but the other reason is because we are once again, for those listening, we are once again coming together for a magazine. Uh, OTB Central will be coming out with another magazine, hopefully before WrestleMania or right around WrestleMania season. I mean, uh, right around WrestleMania. And it will hopefully line up like it did as well as it did with Evolution. Um, the only difference I can officially make this announcement that the only difference between this year and last year will be... I mean, actually, that's the scary part. Yes, it actually is this year and last year. Um, that it will be two separate magazines. One for wrestling and one for other sports. Yes, there may be baseball or football or what have you included in the wrestling magazine just to uh, fill up the magazine just in case I'm unable to fill up the magazine with just wrestling, but I have officially made the decision that there will be two separate magazines, one for wrestling and one for the other sports, namely hockey, which is what I'm shooting for as hockey being its own separate magazine and wrestling integrated with other sports being a part of it. So there is that, and that is the only thing, that and the official hopeful release date of the magazine being ahead of WrestleMania, uh, being there. So there is news earlier than there was of basically everything being secret and talked about beh behind closed doors, per se, with the previous magazine. Because I think that's something that I did wrong as far as marketing it, keeping it everything a little too tight-lipped. But I will be doing a little bit hard, I will be doing a little bit better a job marketing it, or I will at least attempt to do a little bit better job of marketing it, so I'm not the only one purchasing the magazine this time around. Not that I won't purchase a copy, I will, but, uh, like we, like I think I talked about with you, it's worth another shot. Oh, yeah. Because I don't know about you, but it was fun. I thought it was fun. A lot of work? Oh. Yeah. But it was fun. Say it again. Oh no, I said it definitely was fun. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, all the announcements are set aside, and now it's time for me to, or now it's time to wrap up this video, and once again, say, as always, if you want to express your opinion on anything we talked about in this video, please feel free to leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment because feedback is always well, more than welcome and appreciated. But if you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. And before we go, don't forget to ding that not notification bell to always know when a new video comes up on the channel. And maybe next time I will actually know how to do an outro. But other than that, I want to say thank you, as always, to Sam for joining me for another monthly discussion. Thank you.